apologies for the tripod leg. I've had to bust out my old, <laughs> um, my old tripod because my new one, uh, I just couldn't fit these both in frame very well. And I need to. <laughs> so we're just gonna hang out with a tripod leg uh, with one that is held together by four pieces of tape. But hey, it works. <laughs> Today, uh, I am comparing the Tibaldi Bononia versus the Leonardo Officiana Italiana uh, Momento Zero. This one happens to be uh, the Prugna finish. Um, this one, I constantly forget what the finish is called, so I will have it written down. This one uh, in US dollars costs 236, and this is 199. I thought that we should compare these two, um, and I'm not necessarily going to go, you know, that this is more, you know, flat top, this is a cigar, because you can get different finishes. You can get one from Leonardo um, that looks similar to this. You can get one from Tibaldi that looks similar to this. Um, but I thought I would go over general build quality, writing experience, um, my experience using it, um, and I like basically the, the, the build feel, like what's worth it between the two? What's of more value? In my opinion, of course, everything is my opinion. <laughs> so right off the bat, uh, between the two, and this is just the regular Memento Zero, this is not the Grande. Just for sheer comparison's sake, this is the size of the Grande. So this one is a hair taller, the Tibaldi is a hair taller than the Leonardo, but again, uh, it's just that they're slightly different models. This is the Grande, which is obviously bigger, so I, this is the regular version. But almost everything applies to the Grande as well, to be honest, with what I'll say for, uh, for this pen. Why did I feel like these were the perfect pens to compare? Well, they're both Italian pens, for starters. Uh, they both have pens that look very similar. The price point is relatively similar. I would, this one's a little bit more expensive. Um, like I said, this is 236. I'm pulling the pricing, by the way, from uh, US retailers. Uh, so this one is 236, this one is 199. Um, so it might be a little bit different in your country, but that's what I can see. Um, so very, very similar pens. Um, and when you're shopping for a new pen, especially if you've never used an Italian pen before, uh, it can be a little bit daunting. Um, their material tends to be a little bit more flashy, um, which I really, really like. Uh, we're in a, like, you know, Leonardo calls it spaghetti resin. Uh, Tibaldi doesn't call it anything, but very similar territory um, for the style of material. Um, so I just thought that these would be a perfect pen to compare. Uh, so right off the bat, the Leonardo is a little bit heavier than the Tibaldi, not by a whole lot. I do not have a weight to measure them, but just with sheer hand feel, I would say it's maybe a gram or two heavier, um, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, but this does feel, the Tibaldi does feel a little bit lighter. Um, Spoiler, I think it's because there's less metal in this one. There is some me more metal in the Leonardo. I personally prefer the weight of the Leonardo better than the Tibaldi, but that is just me. Visually speaking, uh, they you know both have clips, <laughs> uh, but they are very different. So Leonardo has uh, sort of their rollerball, very uh, Delta-esque. Um, which does roll pretty nicely, um, which is awesome. And, and the Tibaldi just has the straight, like what I like to call like a tie, like, you know, men's like suit and ties kind of reminds me of that. Um, fairly nondescript for both. I'm not a clip person. I don't really use clips. They just act as roll stops to me. So, you know, they are what they are. <laughs> um, they both don't have any crazy adornishments. For the center band, they both have the three rings. I will say that the Leonardo has a little bit of an edge on the Tibaldi. And again, I will preface this, I do not know which one came first. 
So I'm just going to put that out there. I'm just comparing them together. The Leonardo has a bit of an edge because it does feel finished better. They are both raised. You can feel them, but the Dibaldi is a little bit sharper. Um, so it feels like the Memento Zero is softer. Uh, it doesn't have quite as like a, a as big of a punch. Um, and you can sort of see like the, the Leonardo is a little bit more rounded than the Tibaldi. And obviously Leonardo has a ring uh, that's attached to the body and the Tibaldi does not. Um, the Tibaldi has a fairly stiff, or not stiff, uh, steep step down to the actual body of the pen and then it continues down. Obviously Leonardo has a blind cap that you can activate the um, piston. Uh, it's not a piston, well I guess yeah, the converter is technically a piston, but so you can operate the converter without having to remove the body. I know most people don't, but I do know a couple people that do. Um, I don't love that the threads here are metal. Um, I do wish that it was plastic on plastic, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, Tibaldi does not have that. Tibaldi also has no writing on their pen body, whereas Leonardo definitely does. They number all their pens. This is not a limited edition pen, but they number all their pens. Uh, but Leonardo has no writing on the cap, whereas Tobaldi does. It's difficult to see with this material, but it does say Tobaldi right here. And on the back, it says made in Italy. So visually, uh, that's your own preference between the two. Um, I prefer the Prugna a little bit. Uh, more than the Tobaldi, but I really have no problem with Tobaldi. I think that it's beautiful material. Um, as far as the material quality goes, um, they feel similar-ish, um, but the depth of material, I would, I would give this slight edge to Leonardo, uh, but they're pretty close. Uh, and really, I would have to have like a purple one in order to like... <laughs> do a perfect comparison. So for the overall look of the pen, that's purely aesthetic, you know, but it is what it is. Uh, they both unscrew. So we'll give one a teeny tiny itty bitty bit more than one turn to get that uncapped. And I would say like an extra quarter of a turn for Leonardo to get it uncapped, but they're pretty darn similar. So they're both screw caps and then uncapped as far as size goes. They're pretty flippin' similar. <laughs> Not much difference there as far as height goes. Um, the grip section is definitely different uh, in that the Leonardo has a little bit more room to play than the Tobaldi does. Uh, they have the Leonardo has like their their taper down which looks admittedly strange but feels super comfortable <laughs> um, but I really don't have many complaints with the Tobaldi either uh, as far as comfortable goes they both feel very nice in my hand again I do prefer this slight addition of weight to the Leonardo than I do the Tobaldi but really, generally speaking, if I stop nitpicking, they both feel beautiful in my hand. They can both be posted, um, but I am not a good person to really go through that because I don't ever post my pens. I don't like it. Uh, I'm very sensitive to that um, because I don't do it. So both of them feel a little back weighted to me, um, but they're certainly there and they're pretty much spot on size wise again. So I'm going to remove that. If you have watched my video review of just the Tobaldi, and there's reviews of both of these pens, by the way, individually, um, then you know that I do not enjoy the feel of the way that this caps. It catches, and it feels like it's too tight. And it does that on both sides. Um, I have put silicone grease on this, these metal threads uh, on the inside. The Leonardo, on the other hand, is like butter. Like, and Leonardo is also metal to plastic. 
So it's not just that this is metal and that's plastic. Um, and that's why it catches. Now, I do wish that this was not metal, but not many pens do that. Uh, it just feels glorious, <laughs> like absolutely glorious. And even this capping feels phenomenal. Um, so that is 100,000% an edge to the Leonardo. Uh, they both use standard international converters. Uh, one has the Tabaldi label written there. This one is their like premium uh, converter. It is threaded. The Tabaldi is not. And you can remove this metal shroud, I believe. I just haven't. Uh, but it does have their branding on it. Um, but ultimately, same deal. Same deal. They both have steel nibs uh, with plastic feeds. This one is rose gold trim, this one's rhodium trim, but they're both steel. They both have their own logos on it, obviously. <laughs> This one uses a Yovo. I do not know what Tabaldi uses. Um, if a retailer states what it is, then I will put it on the screen. If there's nothing on the screen, it's because they didn't state it. Um, so I would say in looks, it's certainly up to the individual. Um, I would say not even in, see how it like gets stuck. Not even within the writing sample yet. We haven't even touched that. Um, but just in pure build quality and quality control, uh, the winner is Leonardo, hands down. Um, the attention to detail is there and it is lacking in the Tabaldi. Now I did say in my review of the Tabaldi that this is the only Tabaldi I've used. Um, so I don't know, but, you know if this is the only pen really that has this issue and in general, it's much nicer. Um, I've left that into the comment section, so I encourage you to go check that out because uh, the comment section is constantly evolving. But I have used three regular Memento Zeros, two Grandes. Um, I don't own, but I've used someone else's Furore, which is their version of like essentially this look. And they're all stunning. They, like Their quality control is certainly there. Um, so... I would say their attention to detail outweighs Tabaldi hands down. And honestly, this is less expensive than the Tabaldi. So you would think that it would be reversed, but it's not. Price does not always dictate that. Um, so the only other thing to compare is the writing experience. So up here is my actual writing sample of this pen, which inside of it is filled with Pilot Yuro Shizuku Sukiyo. Um, and it is an okay writer. There's nothing super terrible about it, but there's nothing super great about it either. Um, it was a very stiff nib and I had to work with it by doing like, you know, some figure S's, uh, putting some pressure on the downstroke because the tines were exceedingly tight. Um, and it was so, so incredibly dry that it was not pleasant at all. <laughs> um, but I have worked with it a little bit. I haven't done any crazy modifications. I've literally just opened the tines a little bit and it does write better now. Um, it's a, it's a definitely a true fine, I would say. Uh, as far as any Italian pen, this is definitely a fine. It's not quite a Japanese fine, but it's finer than the Leonardo. It's finer than, uh, it's, oh my gosh, it's certainly finer than a Pelican, if you've ever used a Pelican fine. Now that's German and it's not uh, Italian, but you know, European. Um, <laughs> reverse writing definitely writes no problem. I can't spell apparently. Um, I actually prefer the reverse writing experience to the regular writing experience, which is kind of funny, um, but it is very, it's a drier writer for sure. And I put this ink in it because this is a really standard ink in my opinion. 
It's not a gushing ink, but it is certainly not dry by any standards. Uh, it flows really well, it doesn't cause any issues. Um, so to give this pen its best chance, I put my best ink forward um, and it's still really dry. So I would say out of 10, this gets mm, a six. That's a terrible six, but a six. Uh, for the Leonardo, I have put Diamine Writer's Blood into it. Um, similar properties in the sense of the Sukiyo in that it's um, a decently wet ink, but it's not like, you know, crazy, crazy, uh, saturate well it is actually crazy saturated but it's not like um uh, like crazy wet or anything like that uh it's just sort of a, an all-around experience uh, oh i didn't wipe off the, the grip section that was almost going to be a terrible faux pas <laughs> my goodness okay um but the pen writes like butter for sure. This is an extra fine nib. Uh, so it's actually pretty much the same, same uh, size as the Tibaldi fine, um, which just shows you that this is more of a true fine, um, but I really like this. Certainly a much, much wetter pen, much wetter. I mean, this has been now sitting untouched for a while and it still moves. Um, I personally really, really love and enjoy that. Others don't. Um, so others may prefer a drier writer. Others may prefer a wetter writer. It just is what it is. Both of them are stiff in the sense that you're not going to get a ton of line variation. You can squeeze out a tiny bit, but there's really no point. Um, the opposite of the Tibaldi, the reverse writing is not super pleasant, but can be done. Neither of the pens have had hard starts or skips or anything like that. They both performed really nicely. Um, but I prefer the writing experience of the Leonardo. Um, I did not have to work with the tines. I did not have to open them up to increase flow. Um, I've used... Uh, a drier writing ink and it does obviously write drier in the pen uh, but I don't feel like I'm constricted whereas with the Tibaldi I do feel like I have to put a wetter writing ink um, to get the the preference that I have for my pens um, but that said there's nothing inherently wrong with the way the Tibaldi writes I just have a preference for the Leonardo um, so between the two, oh boy, that's, I mean, that's what you guys want to know, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, I would say, oh, by the way, the, the paper is, um, Tomoe River. Um, between the two, obviously you want to know which one do I prefer? Now, if you've been following along <laughs> in this video and paying close attention, you're going to know it for sure. My recommendation between the two is the Leonardo. Um, oh, I never give this a rating out of six or out of 10. Um, I would give it like a, a nine, to be honest. This is a six, this is a nine. It's not perfect, but it's damn near. Um, physically, I prefer the weight of the Leonardo. That wins. Uh, aesthetically, <laughs> honestly, my mood changes between the two. I, I enjoy them both. Um, with the way that they look. I'm a bit more of a sucker for um, rhodium trim and I'm a bit more of a sucker for, um, yeah, rhodium trim. That's, that's basically what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, so sometimes I prefer this look, but I really like this. Um, but I think that they're both very similar aesthetically. Um, so they're pretty much tied there. Quality control, hands down, Leonardo, hands down. There's no stiff 
you know, twistings. I didn't have to silicone grease anything. Um, it feels like all the attention to detail was spot on. Uh, and I can feel the care and the attention that went into this. And I feel that this lacks that, which is disappointing. Again, I know price doesn't matter ultimately, but this is more expensive. And yet this feels, this feels more expensive. This feels like it should be like a $50 pen and yet it's 230. This feels appropriately priced for a $200 pen. It does. Ultimately, that's what I think ticks me off the most about Tibaldi is that it is so expensive and feels cheap. <laughs> and I will put an asterisk on that. Again, this is the only Tibaldi I've used. So do read the comment section down below. I may have a bum pen. Not, other people may not have had that same experience. So in other than aesthetics, which I think tie, every category goes to the Leonardo. It does. Just does. It does. It does. It does. It does. So if you've never used an Italian pen before, I highly recommend you check out the Leonardo um, because I don't think you can go wrong. I really don't. Uh, but this video is very long. <laughs> So I'm going to wrap this up here. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. New videos come out every Monday and Friday and the occasional video on Tuesday. Check out the comment section down below for other people's opinions um, and hit up the Patreon if you want to help support what I do here. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is officially time to thank my Patreon supporters. You help me do what I do here. So for the ultimate human category, we have Daniel Roddy. And for the VIP and above category, we have Elizabeth, Glenn Kelly, Joan Worthman, Brian Hunter, Aaron C., Luna Wolf Games, Bobby A. Bailey, Stuart Riley, Bass, Waylay Chang, Brian Law, Lucas Bell, Aubrey Madcor, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lundman, Jessica Chow, Stephen Baldwin, Carol Lowey, Michael Simon, Sean Sturdy, Catherine Molina, Robert Myers, Bianca Andrews, Bill Pemberton, Jennifer Galiffi, no, Galfi, <laughs> Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Subiwan Kenobi, who by the way is actually presidential tier, Bianca Andrews, Digital, digital Tent Tech, and McCall Bennett Lawrence. Uh, if you did not hear your name and you have recently supported me, this is being filmed April 29th, and I will update this as soon as I can. Thank you, everyone, so, so much.